Hey guys, this is Vic, and today I'd like to share with you my experience going on the TRT, that's testosterone replacement therapy journey. And obligatory disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice, certainly of any kind, or advice of any kind, period. This is simply me sharing my experience and also with the caveat that it's still early days. It's been about four and a half months since I started using testosterone in arguably therapeutic doses. And what I would like to share specifically today are the before and after effects that I've noticed and kind of not getting into the technicalities of blood work or dosing protocol or any of that stuff. I'll save that for another video, I think. And let's jump into it. So before and after. So before, this is mid-June, excuse me, mid-July 2023. Now it's end of October, so it's about four and a half months. And I started at, we're going to start with the uh, physical effects first. I started at 94 kgs and I had quite a, a nice little belly happening. Like I was still strong. I was still had a good amount of muscle on me, but I had kind of this stubborn belly fat that had accumulated over the past probably year that just wouldn't come off. And it was kind of obnoxious, right? And uh, cutting carbs and all of that kind of thing wasn't really helping too much. And now, so that's the before. The after is now I'm about 101 kgs and my abs are starting to come through. So not only, not only did I gain about seven, depends on the day, depends on the weight, right? But let's say between five to seven kgs of lean muscle mass in, you know, just a little over four months. Uh, but I've also lost body fat, I've lost visceral adiposity. And so I'm starting to, to look pretty good, I think. And I, I have gotten comments from you know friends, people in the gym saying, hey, Vic, you're looking big, you're looking really strong. So that, that feels good, obviously, to, to see the result of my hard work in the gym. And I really should mention on that point that the only thing I changed was adding the testosterone, right? Basically, everything else that I used to do, or that I was doing before, rather, has stayed the same, right? So diet, uh, sleep, exercise, going out into nature, stress management, all of those things. I had tried my best to dial those in prior to going in the direction of testosterone, right? Like this was kind of not a last resort, but this was like, I tried everything else. I threw the kitchen sink at myself and was still feeling like I was plateauing on my, on my lifting. Energy was kind of flagging brain fog, there was, you know, all sorts of things that I just felt, okay, I'm doing everything that I can, but it's not having the, the desired effect. Maybe it's testosterone, maybe it's not. And my attitude at the time was, fuck it, let me just go on it. And if it's, if it doesn't work for me, I'll just come off. I'll do the post uh, cycle therapy. I'll, you know, do all the proper things you're supposed to do when you stop using testosterone abruptly if you want to restart your natural testosterone production. And so that was my mindset at the time was let's give it a shot. Maybe it'll fix some things. Maybe I'll feel better. Maybe it won't. And then, okay, no, no harm done, hopefully. And I'll just return to, to my baseline. So the, the conclusion of that is, is that Maybe there are other things that were lacking. Um, like I still need to sort my sleep out. It's still not 100%. Brain fog is not 100%. But certainly testosterone has made a tremendous difference, right? And so that, that's the first indication is I've gained quite a lot of muscle mass, lean muscle mass, and have lost fat. So that's really cool. And my lifts are, are progressing uh, slowly and steadily. And so that, that is encouraging as well. Uh, the next thing that I noticed, um, particularly in the first two to three weeks, which is kind of the, the honeymoon phase where you're 
receiving this testosterone from the outside, you're getting exogenous testosterone through the injections, but your body still hasn't shut off its own production of testosterone. This is my limited understanding of what the mechanism. And so you just feel amazing for whatever reason. Maybe that's not the reason per se, but for whatever reason, you're on a honeymoon period where you just feel amazing. You feel invincible. And indeed, you go to a really hard workout or a really hard sparring session. You'll go lift, you'll go do jujitsu or something like that. And then you don't feel sore at all. You don't feel in the least bit, you just feel fresh. I just felt totally fresh. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Unfortunately, uh, that, that doesn't last. That doesn't continue on exactly in that way. Once my body kind of normalized uh, or sort of got used to and acclimated to the testosterone and my body shut off its own production, then I did start getting normally sore again from difficult workouts and workouts, you know, became sort of hard, normally hard again. But it used to be that by Tuesday, by Wednesday at the latest, I would be absolutely smashed, right? So Monday I'd come in to lift, Tuesday I'd go do jujitsu, Wednesday I'd come in to lift, Thursday jujitsu, Friday lift. Sometimes I throw a jujitsu on top of the lifting. But basically, lifting three days a week, jujitsu three days a week is kind of my schedule. And I would be just absolutely sore and broken by Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, to say nothing of Friday or Saturday, I'd just be like destroyed. Now, uh, I, I do get sore. If, you know, if it's a hard training session, I'll definitely you know, feel it. But by the next morning, I'm pretty much good again. And that is... To me, that's like, holy shit, that is, that is just amazing. Um, the, the level of recovery, and it's not, you know, I, I, was, I was taking it stoically, and I just figured, look, I'm getting older, you know, I train hard, I, I, I try to, you know, I try to keep up with these, with these young guys, and this is just the price that I'm paying, right? I'm just, if you want to go hard, if you want to train like, you know, like you're 20 years old or 19 years old, then you're going to get sore. And I was just kind of at peace with just being like sore and, and not feeling 100% all the time. And I kind of thought, well, that's just what it is. And it is kind of just what it is, but it doesn't have to be, this was me convincing myself at that time, it's like, does it have to be that way? Maybe it doesn't have to be quite so, so, so gnarly. And then I thought, well, maybe I should back off my training and focus more on, you know, on like just like stretching and this kind of thing. And I, I didn't want to do that. And so that's another thing that I think maybe, you know, is potentially unique to, to my experience here is that there are certain things that I want to do at a certain level and I'm not really willing to compromise on doing those things. I'm not sort of willing to, you know, start backing off from training jiu-jitsu or from lifting heavy. That's just not something that I was willing to do. So I thought, okay, if I want to continue doing that at that level, I'm either going to have to just deal with being sore all the time or I'm going to, you know, hop on the testosterone and maybe that'll help. And it, and it certainly has helped. So long story short, yes, I still get sore, but it's nowhere near as bad and it passes much more quickly. So that has been frankly, almost miraculous. And tying into that, into the recovery thing is just general energy levels, right? I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm an entrepreneur, you know, I train uh, six days a week basically, and I need to have good energy levels because all those things are very uh, tiring, especially stacked one on top of the other and trying, trying to be good at all of those things. Uh, it's very difficult. And I would say, I don't know how to quantify it, but I would say in general, all things being equal, my energy levels have gone up maybe 20, 30%, which to me, that's huge. It's not like a huge, huge difference to where like now I just, you know, I can sleep five hours a night and then I'm just good all day. No, it doesn't work that way for me. I wish it did. I wish I could sleep less, but I can't. Uh, I need like nine hours, honestly. And, um, I've tried the whole, you know, Hey, let's wake up at four 30 and 
all of that just didn't work for me, right? Uh, what works for me is winding down at night, staying off all the devices and all that crap, and just really making the transition from being kind of aroused and engaged with uh, work or, 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 you know, researching something or reading something to, okay, it's evening, it's dinner time, okay, now it's time to start chilling out, it's, it's time to start like letting go of that stress, you know, shaking it out of my body and um, getting ready to, to relax, honestly, is what helps me. And so that comes to the next point of sleep. Now, a lot of people I've heard anecdotally from, you know, people that I know who also take testosterone that it's helped their sleep. And I honestly can't say that my sleep has improved that much, if at all. Um, and I think maybe my situation is a little bit unique because I have pretty bad uh, lower back pain, which kind of just messes up my sleep in general. So it may not be a good gauge. Like, like what I'm saying is if that back pain weren't there, maybe I'd be able to accurately say, oh yeah, my sleep has improved by, you know, 15%, 20% or whatever. But since the back pain is kind of constant and, and it affects my sleep negatively pretty much all the time, um, and I'm working on that, maybe I'll make a video if I find some good solutions, then, uh, then I'd be able to say, but I, I really can't comment on that because I haven't really noticed uh, an improvement. Uh, libido. Uh, libido was good before, and libido is good now. Um, I wouldn't say that it has um, really lowered or... I wouldn't say it's improved or declined in, in any substantial way. I still have a you know, healthy, healthy libido. And those are kind of the major physical effects. And as impressive and wonderful as those have been... And again, this is only 4.5 months in. I'm just absolutely stoked to see what happens in 12 months, 24 months, you know, how much I can sort of grow and, and, and uh, accomplish by continually improving myself and sort of optimizing myself and having the energy and the resourcefulness and the decisiveness. This is getting into the sort of the psychological factors to, to be able to do all of those things. So mental, psychological, before and after. Uh, before, brain fog, major, major brain fog, and specifically with short-term memory. Now, that, that's kind of a tough one because I think a lot of it has to do with looking at smartphones, going on social media, all that shit. It just, it like fries your brain. It fries your short-term memory, spending too much time on, on devices and stuff. So I've tried to cut that out in general many times, and I, you know, sometimes it I lose that battle and then I have to start fighting that battle again. Uh, right now I'm doing a pretty good job, so I'm, I'm proud of myself for that. But I would say that, all, again, all things being equal, because it didn't really change that much, um, is definitely brain fog has lifted to a considerable degree. Just general thinking, general recall, short-term, long-term recall, ability to think extemporaneously in the moment, ability to make decisions, again, decisiveness, uh, has certainly improved. Had, has it cured my brain fog? No, I definitely wouldn't say that. I would definitely say that there are other things I probably should do, like improve my sleep would probably be a big one. Stay off all the social media. You know, there's a lot of factors, I think, that can affect that. But there has been a, a noticeable improvement in, in brain power, let's say, or brain clarity. And uh, one effect that actually really surprised me because I don't even really remember reading about this when I was doing all my research. I did a lot of research before I dove into this, like I said, is how calm I have become. And this is maybe my favorite, you know, effect, if you want to call it that. My, my favorite thing is being able to, for the most part, walk into any situation, be in any social environment, work scenario, you know, relationship scenario, whatever is the thing and, you know, whatever is the level of stress involved, it, it kind of rolls off my back or I handle it, let's say, with a sense of calm and 
uh, equanimity that maybe I did, maybe I didn't have before, but certainly subjectively it feels easier to handle things and, and a sort of like a resilience to where it's, it's not that I don't feel stressed. Of course I do, or that things don't bother me or, or whatever or frustrate me. Of course they do. But when those things happen, it just doesn't penetrate quite as deeply. I'm able to deal with it more effectively, more calmly. Generally, you know, if, if you're calmer, you're going to deal with things better. Right. And then, <clears throat> um, they don't bother me as long, right? So something kind of annoys me and I'm not dwelling on it. You know, I just kind of like, you know, whatever, on to the next thing. Um, you know, what's, what's next on the agenda? And that has been really wonderful for me because I think, um, and this is kind of coming into the, the other psychological effects, maybe they all stem from this one root parent effect, if you will. I would classify it as a reduction in neuroticism. And some people, you know, are more neurotic. Some people are less neurotic. I think I have tended most of my life to be on the more neurotic side of things, meaning more overthinking, more sort of, um, you know, social anxiety, you know, uh, just, you know, worrying needlessly about things and that has subsided substantially. And I, I wouldn't say it was too bad. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe to the outside observer, they, they wouldn't sort of like interacting with me. They wouldn't think, oh, Vic has a neurotic temperament or something like that. Uh, or maybe they would, I don't know, but Again, subjectively, just how it feels to be in my own body and in my own brain and going through life, I don't feel like it sort of uh, triggers this neurotic um, way of thinking. And the kind of the manifestation of that is more decisiveness, which is nice, obviously, to uh, make decisions more quickly hopefully more intelligently as well. I don't know. But uh, another one that kind of surprised me, I think also stemming from the reduced neuroticism, is um, a greater extroversion. So just a greater desire and interest in engaging with other people and engaging with groups and the, the tribe and sort of being in the hierarchy and competing in the hierarchy. It's just... Uh, you know, whatever sort of introverted tendencies that I have, I I still have them. I still enjoy being alone and uh, do find it to be somewhat uh, tiring to be in a lot of social interactions, but I kind of crave social interactions more now. I really, I look forward to like going to the gym and, uh, you know, talking to people and seeing all the social dynamics unfold and being part of it. Um, it's just a lot more appealing to me now and for no reason that I can really discern other than perhaps if I had to speculate why that might be is maybe because as your testosterone goes up as a man that you're sort of more inclined to compete in the dominance hierarchy which involves engaging in the dominance hierarchy seeing who the players are you know, formulating a strategy, you know, if you want to look at it in sort of a Machiavellian way. But uh, let's say if we look at it in a less cynical, um, through a less cynical prism, it's just that I want to talk to people. I want to engage with people, have a, have a chat, have a laugh. And uh, sure, I did that before, but now it's just, it just comes a little bit more naturally. And again, that's something that I was not expecting. And that has been a very pleasant surprise. So uh, that covers, I think, the physical and mental effects that I had in my notes here. And I will say my my final point here is that there are some side effects that I've experienced. So I'll share those side effects briefly. And um, one side effect is I've had quite a bad outbreak of acne on my back, kind of along the... um, up and down the sides of my back. And uh, it's not 
terrible. It's not like uh, so bad to where like they pop or hurt or something. It just looks a little bit unsightly. And so all I'm doing is just, you know, washing it with natural soap after the gym and just trying to, you know, not eat any garbage. And uh, would I like it to not be there? Yes. But is it kind of a deal breaker for me? Not at all. Um, not at all. And so the other side effect is that my testicles have shrunk, which is what happens when you take testosterone from the outside is your testicles stop producing testosterone and therefore they're not in use and therefore they start to uh, atrophy to some degree. Uh, for some people, it's quite a lot. For some people, it's uh, negligible. I would say my balls shrunk maybe like 20%. Not really a big deal for me. And honestly, when it comes to uh, grappling, doing jujitsu, it's kind of nice to not have like your balls in the way and just, you're just sort of a little bit more, um, I'm not joking. It really is kind of nice for them to sort of be a little bit less conspicuous. And uh, related to that as well is the, uh, your, your, my semen volume has gone down uh, slightly. So that's also kind of makes sense that your balls uh, aren't sort of working. They're not online. And so you're going to be producing less semen volume. Although I understand that a lot of semen volume, I think is produced by the prostate gland. Again, not a doctor, but that's my observation. Your loads are a little bit uh, lower, but again, it's not, it's not a huge amount. It's negligible as far as I'm concerned. As far as I'm concerned, all of these side effects so far at the doses that I've been taking testosterone are negligible and not in any way detracting from quality of life um, other than maybe the, the acne, but again, not a deal breaker. So guys, I hope that's helpful. I hope that, um, that if you're kind of in a similar situation to what I was in, again, started at 37 years old, didn't feel quite, quite, uh, you know, myself didn't feel quite optimized. And I kind of figured at that time, you know, I've optimized everything that I can within reason, right? Uh, I didn't like go get stem cells or something like crazy like that yet, but everything within reason, I've done my best to optimize. Still not feeling great. Okay, fuck it. Let me get on testosterone. If it doesn't work out, I'll come off it in sort of the best way that I know how, you know, do the post cycle therapy, all of that kind of thing. And, um, if it does, then great. You know, it's like, I, my feeling was I didn't have anything really to lose by, uh, going in that direction. And now that it's been four and a half months, I can pretty safely say that barring some kind of crazy circumstance, you know, maybe I want to have another, uh, kid or whatever. I don't think I'll be coming off of testosterone ever because I um, don't ever want to feel, you know, the way that I felt previously because, and it's true. It's kind of, you never think, certainly I've heard before, like frog in boiling water, it, you know, year by year, you're losing 1% of your testosterone and you, you don't really feel yourself diminishing. You don't feel yourself getting, you know, becoming like less than, uh, than what you were when you were, you know, in your twenties or whatever it is. And I didn't, I, you know, I just, um, I kind of started feeling my age at 33. I started feeling a little bit more run down, you know, after workouts, that kind of thing, a little, a little sleepier after lunch, you know, just a little more brain fog. And I thought, well, you know, I'm getting a bit older and you know, this is, this is just what happens. And I, I, I wasn't willing to, that's, that wasn't okay for me. It wasn't okay for me because I want to continue training hard. I want to continue lifting heavy weights. I want to continue improving my lifts. I want to continue training jujitsu and improving in jujitsu and training hard and competing. And for me, that meant getting some chemical assistance. So it wasn't even just to give you a final bit of context. It wasn't even like, oh, I'm not feeling great let me hop on testosterone to replace my testosterone. It, it was that as well, but it was almost just, no, I want to operate at just a crazy high level. And I know that at some point 
I'm going to need to be on testosterone in order for that to happen. And now that I've sort of been there, um, and again, it's early days, I'm sure I'll be making an update video in 12 months, 24 months. Maybe I'll have some new insights. Maybe I'll change my mind on some things. For sure, probably I will. But um, I'm just not okay with sort of deteriorating and becoming a lesser version of, of myself. And if that means that I don't live as long or that, you know, I incur some kind of um, consequences as a result of that, I'd rather live a great quality of life and live fewer years than, you know, live into old age as a decrepit sort of useless milk toast version of myself. So uh, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to pop it in the uh, comments. Uh, I'm not selling anything. I'm not selling fucking coaching. I'm not linking, you know, there's no affiliate links to some TRT lab or any of that shit. This is just me um, wanting to help other people because honestly, I should have gotten on probably 10 years ago is uh, what I now realize. And uh, maybe some of you guys are in a similar position and you're considering it. And maybe this is of some uh, value and service to you. I hope it is. And I'll see you guys next time.